Hello everyone. Welcome to the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad in Wyoming. I'm Mark Pruitt. In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed and how I use the WFD-31 Wi-Fi adapter to run trains on my NCE PowerPro powered DCC layout. I just installed the WFD-31 a bit over a month ago, so I'm still learning its capabilities. But here it is so far. The WFD-31 is a very handy little doodad produced by an Australian company called Wi-Fi Tracks. What it does is add Wi-Fi connectivity to an NCE DCC system. In a Power Pro system, it's a direct replacement for one of NCE's UTPs, the Universal Throttle Panels. The WFD-31 can be installed to work with NCE's Power Cab system, but since I have no experience with it, I'm not going to go through it. If you search YouTube for WFD-31, you'll find some videos on using it with a power cab. Installing the WFD-31 into a Power Pro system is moronically simple, and I am really not kidding about that. The hardest part is reading the instructions. The installation instructions are all of one page long, and the only reason they're that long is because they cover installing the unit for both the Power Pro and the Power Cab systems. With my Power Pro system, I installed the unit in place of one of my UTPs. Here's how I did it. I picked the UTP at Thermopolis to replace because it's the one most centered in the room. It was also the one at the end of a string of UTPs and the one with the NCE radio connected. I disconnected the cables from the back of the UTP and removed it from the layout. Then I removed the UTP from the faceplate. The WFD31 LED is a 5 mm diameter, but the hole in the UTP faceplate is sized for a 3 mm diameter LED. The instructions say to use a 5 mm or number 10 drill bit to enlarge the hole. Since I only have standard fractional drill bits in that size range, I open the hole to 13 64ths. It took all of about five minutes to drill out the faceplate, including pulling the bit out of the bin and loading it into the drill. I used my hand drill, but I was very careful to drill at a low speed to avoid slipping and scratching or breaking the plastic plate. I test fitted the WFD31 into the faceplate. It fit perfectly, so I permanently attached it. One thing to keep in mind, the mounting screws that come with the WFD31 are different than the ones the UTP uses. If you try to reuse the UTP screws, you might chew up the mounting lugs on the WFD31. The UTP screws are number six, and the WFD31 screws are probably metric, most likely 3.5 millimeter diameter. I reattached the faceplate with the WFD31 to the layout and reconnected the cables. I walked over to Casper and turned on my DCC system, which is located below the Casper yard throat. By the time I got back to the newly installed WFD31, it looked like this. According to the detailed online manual, the magenta color of the LED means the NCE cab bus is recognizing the module. The module is ready to accept Wi-Fi data and convert it to cab bus commands. I was in business. Now it was time to configure my phone to run trains. If you have an Android phone, which I do, you can download the Engine Driver app free from the Play Store. Since we have Wi-Fi on our Digitrack system at the club, I already had it on my phone. If you have an iPhone, you can download one of the Y Throttle apps from the Apple Store. The full version, which will allow you to access to the WFD31's more advanced features, just as the Engine Driver app on an Android will, will cost you about $10. Y-Throttle Lite, which does not allow you to access those advanced features, 
but does let you run trains and access the WFD-31's locomotive roster and consists, is free. I'll cover the setup of Engine Driver, since I'm most familiar with it, but Y Throttle Lite's setup is very similar. I went into settings on my phone and connected to the WFD-31's network. While the exact network name is different for each WFD-31, all of them have WFD-31 in the name, so it's easy to spot. Once I did that, I started Engine Driver. On the network selection panel, I saw this after a few seconds. I selected the SN3311062 server and hit connect. I was taken to this throttle screen. Engine Driver has many different throttle screen configurations available under Preferences, which you get to by selecting the three dots in the upper right corner of the screen and picking Preferences from the drop-down menu that appears. The throttle screen you're looking at right now is the dual vertical throttle. Play around with the layouts and pick the one you like best. I was playing around with Engine Driver at this point and switched to the vertical switching left screen and then hit the select button at the top. I entered a local number just like I would have on one of my NCE throttles. I was taken back to the throttle screen where the local number now appears at the top. I half held my breath as I advanced the throttle. It worked! The Wi-Fi connection integrated smoothly with the NCE cab bus. All the function buttons worked properly, and there was no hint of lag between a throttle action and the local's response, and no drop key strokes from anywhere in the basement. The first full-up test of the new Wi-Fi capability came in my operating session on June 25th. Kurt, in the foreground, used my radio master cab to run his trains, while Dave, in the middle, ran Casper Yard from a tethered cab 06R. Sean, in the background, ran trains with his phone, as did I. All the cabs worked fine. The bus was receiving commands from the radio, the Wi-Fi, and from a wired throttle, and integrated them all without a hiccup. And that's the basics of how I installed the WFD-31 and how I use it on my layout. From this point on in the video, I'll talk about the locomotive roster built into the WFD-31, and an issue that came up with the WFD-31 and engine driver, and how one of the advanced features of the WFD-31 overcomes it. The issue that arose is the NCE Light It driven markers on two of my cabooses. The light it decoders default to using functions 0, 1, and 2 to turn on the interior lights and each marker separately. On our locomotive, functions 0 through 2 are the headlight, bell, and whistle respectively. I found out that using engine driver, I couldn't turn on the marker control by function 2. It just wouldn't light. I can turn it on using function button 2 on my NCE throttles. And that gets us into latched versus non-latched functions. Quite simply, functions 0 and 1 on a DCC system are latched. That is, they take one button press to turn them on and another button press to turn them off. The headlights, for instance, you push the headlight button once to turn it on and again to turn it off. The bell, function 1, is the same way. Press the bell button or function button 1 to turn the bell on, and press again to turn it off. The whistle is different. It's non-latching. Press and hold the horn slash whistle button to blow the whistle. It stops when you let go of the button. But press function button 2 on the throttle, and the whistle sounds until you press function button 2 again. The whistle button is non-latching, but function button 2 is latching in the NCE system. But the engine driver app doesn't have separate whistle and function 2 buttons. For the operating session, 
I used the ProCab throttle to turn on the caboose markers since I couldn't do it from my phone throttle. I thought this might be a limitation of the phone throttles I would just have to live with, but a few days ago I began looking at some of the WFD31's more advanced features and discovered that the unit has the flexibility to deal with this problem. So let's take a look at one of these advanced features, the WFD31's built-in web pages and specifically the locomotive roster. Getting to the WFD31's web pages in Engine Driver is very simple. You touch the three dots in the upper right corner of the screen and select Web on the drop-down menu. This takes you to the menu page of the WFD31. From here you can do all sorts of things with the unit, but I'm only going to talk about a couple of them, mainly the locomotive roster. This is what the default locomotive roster page looks like before you make any changes. Well, what does this page do? Essentially, it allows you to name any mobile decoder, usually a locomotive, but as you'll see, not just locomotives, and configure its function buttons. Here's how it works. You go into the WFD31's built-in web pages and select Locomotive Roster. You select one of the local entries by the name. By default, there are four of them, Loco 0 through Loco 3. I touched on Loco 0, which opened up its roster page. As you can see, I tried renaming the entry CBNQ080545. Then I entered the decoder address 545. When I saved it, the phone automatically went back to the local roster main page. But what's this? The loco showed up in the list as CB. That's not right. A local roster entry name can be 15 characters long and have spaces. Remember that last part, by the way. This field and function names are the only ones that can have spaces. If you try to enter a name longer than 15 characters, and you have to count the spaces, the name is not updated in the roster, though everything else, the functions and the DCC address, is. But CB and Q080545 only has 14 characters, so what happened? Well, the best I can figure out is that you cannot use an ampersand in the local name. Everything to the right of that is discarded when you save the entry. So I went back and renamed the entry to just 080545. Later, I went back and renamed it again, this time to CBQ080545. One thing to keep in mind is that after you make any changes to the WFD31 pages, you have to restart Engine Driver to see them on your phone. After saving the entry for 545, I went back in and renamed functions 0 through 2 to headlight, bell, and whistle. When I make the entry for the doodlebug, I'll label function 2 horn. So what about that annoying issue with the marker on the cabooses? Well, here's where we edit the way function 2 works. When I added my Chicago and Northwestern way car number 10527 to the roster, I called it CNW cab 10527. I entered the DCC address 1052, saved the entry, then went back into the entry and into the function 0 to 9 page. Here I labeled function 0, 1, and 2 to the lights they control interior light, left marker, and right marker. Something else to remember, by the way, function names can only be 10 characters long. I had to do one more thing to make function 2, the right marker, work properly. I changed it from a non-latching button to a latching one simply by touching the box next to latched under the function name field. That changed the button from on only when pressed, like it is for the whistle, to press for on, then press again for off. I tested it, and sure enough, it handles the marker lights properly now. Sorry about the out of focus way car, but it does illustrate the point. And that, folks, 
is about as far as I've gotten with the WFD-31. A couple of things to keep in mind. The WFD-31 will handle only four Wi-Fi throttles. If you have a router at home and connect the WFD-31 to it, you're supposed to be able to use up to eight Wi-Fi throttles. One of the advantages, or disadvantages depending on your point of view, is that if you connect the WFD-31 to your home network, your phone will still be connected to the internet even while running trains. Without that home net connection, you won't be. I haven't tried the home net yet, so I can't really go over it. I'm still just learning the capabilities of the WFD-31 and there are lots of things I haven't even touched yet. But I can say this, for a total investment of $140 including the shipping cost from Australia to the US, this little bugger is well worth the money. Setup was absolutely painless, and it didn't even take five minutes after that to start running trains from my phone. I didn't need to connect a computer and all that entails to the layout. I just popped the WFD-31 into my cab bus and was ready to run. The folks at Wi-Fi Tracks have come up with a solid, high-value product at a very reasonable cost. This is hands down the best model railroading purchase I've made in a very long time. And by the way, I'm not affiliated with those folks in any way. I'm not receiving any consideration for producing this video or for saying nice things about their product. I just think it's great. So there we are. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy model railroading. See you soon.